Hey there, today I am super excited to finally be able to share with you some of the things that have recently come off the loom. Things that I've just finished weaving for the faux ecat class and some of the spinning things that are happening right now as well. Hey there, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing. Today, specifically, I wanna tell you about the things that I have been weaving. I'm gonna share with you, you've probably seen some of these in and around uh, Instagram and things like that, but I am so excited to show you some of the scarves that have come off of the loom. This is the first scarf that came off the mirror loom. If you guys watch that episode about the counterbalance, you will see this one being pulled off the loom, but here it is all nice and washed and how drapey it is. I am doing a little twisted fringe on the bottom of this. It takes a long time. <laughs> I also had, it, it takes a long time because I also had this thing where I uh, I forgot to hem stitch the very beginning of my weaving. And so as I started to do the twisted fringe on this end where I had not done any hem stitching, it was just all kind of coming apart and it was loose and it was terrible. So I had to unweave three picks of weft yarn from the beginning and then put in the hem stitching afterwards. It was not super fun. And so now I'm still going to go through and finish the rest of that twisted fringe. But this is the first scarf. I'm going to share with you guys the second scarf. This one is also washed and off the loom. This one does not have any fringe done yet. This has all just been washed. So you can see it's all loosey, yucky, needs to be cut off and then made into twisted fringe. But this is the second scarf. Ta-da! And so this is two different colors of Tough Love Sock that have been woven together on a rigid head of loom. This was done on the Ashford 16 inch samplet loom. Super, super easy to do. So these are all scarves that use this faux ecat technique. Um, and then that's what we're teaching in the School of Sweet Georgia right now. So that's the faux ecat uh, technique. Basically taking a hand painted skein of yarn and then winding it in a way so that all the colors stack up again and then become these solid color sections. So this is, like all the pinks line up, all the greens line up, all the blues line up, and so on. So in that new class for the School of Sweet Georgia, the faux ecat episode of the handwoven color course, I go through all the steps for how to produce these scarves. Now, the third scarf, I did mention to you guys I was going to do this because the... Um, the loom was already tied up. It was ready to go. All I had to do was just tie on another warp. And so I decided to do that with these colors. And so this is how that final scarf turned out. I said I wanted to make it, um, I wanted to make it that faux ecat uh, look as well, but that did not happen. I talk about that in much greater depth in the actual class, <laughs> talking about why that mistake happened, uh, what I could do to prevent it next time. But I did manage to record a really lovely overhead video of weaving on this scarf. It was so, so much fun. And I, I'll show you here. I have, I can show you. I wound a bobbin of the mohair weft yarn and I basically started here. You can see where my finger is here. And that one bobbin lasted until this point here. So this much this much weaving, this much weaving. From fingers to fingers, that's how much weaving I was able to accomplish with one single bobbin of weft yarn. That one bobbin took seven and a half minutes to weave. Seven and a half minutes to weave what is now basically 32 inches of scarf. So this entire scarf is only like 78 inches. And so as I was working out the math, I realized that this entire scarf would have taken probably about 20 minutes to weave. 20 minutes time of just throwing the shuttle back and forth in order to produce this scarf. 
And so it was one of those things I wanted to mention, not because I'm trying to encourage or stress speed weaving, because that is not at all what this is about. I was just in the flow and really enjoying the process of throwing the shuttle and the entire process of weaving that one bobbin, 32 inches of cloth, took seven and a half minutes. And the lesson that I get out of that is that I should really slow down and, and really enjoy and savor every single part of the weaving process. Because, you know, it takes a lot of time to dress the loom. It might have taken maybe an hour and a bit to tie in all the ends, the time beaming the warp, and then uh, the actual process, the actual time spent throwing the shuttle is very, very small compared to all of the other time that's being spent. Like I told, I was telling Charlotte that, you know, this entire scarf maybe took maybe an hour to weave spread over a couple days, maybe just an hour to weave. But this, this twisted fringe has taken me three nights <laughs> just to do one side. So that part of it is, uh, yeah, it's the management of time and like learning to really enjoy the tools that you're working with. So right now I'm doing this twisted fringe with the fringe twister from Ashford. It's a four, four prong twister and I'm able to connect it or like hook it to the end of a table. So it's very secure, it's not going anywhere. And that's really helped with producing this twisted fringe in a slightly faster way. But twisted fringe just takes so long. <laughs> the bane of my existence. So this, so this scarf actually ended up being a mistake. This did not come out with that faux e-cat look like I wanted it to or expected it to. But ultimately, I still like it. It's still gonna be a wearable piece. It's still very warm and comfortable. And um, yeah, just gotta finish these ends and then it'll be ready to go. But I wanted to share with you some other things that are happening in our world right now. Obviously, I have been working on this faux e-cat class for some time now. Glad that it's finally up and ready to share with you guys. Um, also with our spinning classes on the School of Sweet Georgia, we've had Katrina come and uh, she's doing this six module class called Spinning Up a Level. So I talked about it a couple weeks before about, you know, doing your homework and going through and doing the spinning exercises and things like that. And when we were filming this class with Katrina, there was two things that sort of came up to me that I thought would be nice things to offer. And one of them is Katrina talks a lot about all of the different fibers and wool, uh, different kinds of sheep, sheep breeds, all of these kinds of things, and how important it is to sort of have a sense of what these things are, just to have some experience in your fingers. Like, what does BFL feel like versus merino? What does non-superwash merino feel like versus superwash merino? What does Polworth and silk feel like? What does um, a cellulose fiber, what does a worsted prep feel like versus a woolen prep? And so, finally, after some time, we've been wanting to do this for a while, we finally put it together. We have now a spinning fiber taster palette. So there's a box here that we've put together that has a whole bunch of different um, fibers. These are undyed fibers. And it's just to give you a taste of what these fibers feel like. So in this case, we have six of the base fibers that we have dyed for Sweet Georgia before. So among them, you have Targi, there's BFL and Silk, it's my personal favorite. There's Polworth and Silk, there's Panda, Superwash BFL, and Gotland. Gotland is super cool. <laughs> so the Gotland here is undyed, but you can see it is quite dark. So this is the natural color of some of these Gotland sheep. They come in a bunch of different colors, but this one happens to be sort of like mid, mid gray. So all of the little fiber packets that we have here from Sweet Georgia, these are all commercially combed top. So that means that they have been prepared in a way where the fibers are, for the most part, very, very parallel. They've been a little bit compacted together. And it's meant so that the fibers have a very nice and tidy and parallel orientation. So that way, when you're spinning this, if you were to spin it worsted style, then you would get a very smooth, slick sort of final yarn. So that's the combed top. Now, what we also have included in here is a seventh little packet. This packet is from Crafty Jacks. So we asked Katrina, because Katrina's business is called Crafty Jacks, and one of the things that she's very known for is making carded bats or carded preparations. So carding takes the fiber and it mixes it up into a whole bunch of different orientations, so that way it uh, allows more air to go into the yarn that you're making. So if you take this carded preparation and you spin it with a 
woolen drafting technique like long draw, then you're going to capture a lot of air in your yarn and the yarn will be more spongy, it'll be more warm, it'll be more insulating. And so we wanted to give people a taste for what it's like to work with a carded preparation because we at Sweet Georgia, we don't make any carded preparations. So it's neat to have like a little taster from Katrina. So we're making just a handful of these kits to begin with. And so Katrina's given me a whole bunch of these little carded batlets and they're all a little bit different. The whole point of these is for you to experience the carded preparation, but they're made of a whole bunch of different kinds of fiber. So this one is BFL and Tassa silk. This one is Merino on its own. This one is BFL and Firestar. This is another one that's BFL and silk. Superwash Merino and Nylon. So these little batlets from Katrina's Crafty Jacks are going to be randomly distributed in all of the kits that we provide. So if you are interested in doing some more spinning and experimenting with different fiber blends and what different wools feel like, then I encourage you to check out this little taster palette of fibers. So fibers are ready in the shop. And I'm very excited to share with you a second fiber announcement. And that is that we have new colorways for the spinning fiber. This was another thing that came up while we were doing the filming for Katrina's classes. In a couple of weeks, we're gonna release the episode where she talks about color management. And so she takes different hand painted fibers and she's spun them up into a number of different ways so that you can compare how one braid becomes all of these different, different results. And uh, so, while we were going through that module, I was thinking, oh, I wish that we had more hand-painted colorways to share with you guys. Because uh, as you know, uh, Sweet Georgia, we've had so many colors over the years. We've been making colors and there's probably more than 300, maybe almost 400 colorways that we've made. And it's not really a good idea for us to maintain all three or 400 colorways all the time on everything that we dye. So you may have heard me talk about before how we culled our colors from like three or 400 down to a core collection of colorways. And in that core collection, we had only like a handful of hand-painted colorways. So I'm very excited to share with you now that that we have just added nine new colorways, hand-painted colorways for the spinning fiber to the shop. So I'm gonna share with you the nine new colorways that we have for spinning fiber. So the first one here is one that was, came up very popular earlier this year, it's called Tofino Road Trip. So these are all inspired by our Party of Five sets. So if they seem really familiar, that's where they're coming from. So this is the Tofino Road Trip. The other one from that sort of spring Party five is this one, the Spring Fling. So that one has also been quite popular this spring. And then for our two fall Party of Five colorways, we're also making fiber versions of those. So this one was called Throwback. And this one is called Celestial. And then we have a couple of colorways that have come from Party of Five color sets that we've done before. So you might recognize some of these because the colors are going to be familiar. So this is Escape. This one is Candy Shop. And this one is called Aurora. So very blue, green, and purple. And this one is called Fairy Tale. And this last one, uh, is my absolute favorite. <laughs> this one, I was like, oh my God, I wanna make that one. This one is the Blueberry Cobbler. So Blueberry Cobbler made into spinning fiber. So one of the things that I absolutely wanna do with all of this new fiber <laughs> is I wanna do more combination plying and combination spinning. I've been just really, really um, enjoying seeing a lot of the things that come out of that. Sometimes we get really nervous about, you know, hand-painted colorways that are very shocking or very jarring, you know, like there's a limey color in here, it's very stressful for some people, uh, very hot pink color in here, very stressful. One of the things that you can do, we'll talk about that in Katrina's class as well, is you can take like a small strip of one of these colors, maybe take a small strip of another color and another strip from another color braid, and then you can hold these three together and draft them all together into a new yarn. And so all of these colors will mix and blend together and form something completely different. It won't look like this anymore. It will be an amalgamation of these colors. 
It's a really, really super fun way to play with different colored fibers, to extend one braid. Like if you only have one braid of this and you want to make something bigger, then you can take another braid from another colorway, blend them together, and then you have twice as much yarn at the end of the day. There's so many things, so many things that you guys can do, so many things that you can do with all of this fiber. So. <laughs> So I'm really, really excited to finally have all these colors available to you. I hope that you find them inspiring. I hope that you make some beautiful things out of them. I'm excited to see if you guys are doing very much spinning these days. I am really comforted by the idea of sitting and doing lots and lots of spinning this winter. Um, and excited to actually use a lot of that hand spun in some hand woven projects. I have actually just started to tie on a new warp onto the baby wolf. And that is going to be a hand spun warp. It's the hand spun colorway that I did in that Rocky Mountain Meadow, uh, the Shacked exclusive colorway that we did earlier this fall. So that scarf is going on the loom right now. I have been sort of at a crossroads with that new big loom because, you know, seeing how I made this scarf in no time at all and then made this scarf in apparently 20 minutes of weaving, um, it really makes me want to tie on another scarf and another scarf and another scarf. But I have other things that I want to learn and explore. So definitely like before the end of this year, we've been talking about make nine all year and where we are in our make nine progress. And I feel a little bit like I've fallen off of my make nine course and uh, wanting to get back to that a little bit. And on my make nine is this idea of doing um, a meet and separate runner and doing croak brag. And so I've already wound a warp that I'm gonna put on a loom eventually to do this croak brag testing. And it's there, it's right there, but I just can't seem to jump that hurdle of taking out 200 or so ends that are already threaded into my loom and putting in a new warp that's only like 24 ends. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm just at that moment where I need to just pull out the yarn and start or tie on a new scarf and make another, another piece of cloth. So, <laughs> and so that's basically where I'm at with my weaving projects, with the things that I wanna spin, with the things that I'm gonna make, with the things that I've spun. I would be really interested to hear what you guys are doing in terms of your spinning, in terms of your weaving these days. If you're preparing for anything big this winter, anything big project-wise that you're working on, or if you're working on a lot of little projects. I've talked to a lot of makers who are still very um, focused on making small things at a time, really small projects, you know, very portable and quick and easy projects. So I'm interested to hear what you guys are doing as well. Please leave me a comment below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here every Friday and we talk about knitting and weaving and spinning and dyeing. And we talk about wonderful things to do with color. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now. Thank you.